Hey guys, I'm back with another episode of the Duplication Nation MLM podcast. DuplicationNation.com is this joint venture, joint labor of love I do with Jaime Lokier. And we have created this outlet to provide training and inspiration and guidance to people in the direct selling profession. And this episode is one of what we call the chopping it up with dot, dot, dot series, where each episode I pick one of the top people in our space uh, who's doing great things in the business. And we just have a conversation. It's not an interview. Um, it's really just um, what we call the locker room conversation, the the real world, big kid conversation of how things really work in the business and you get to eavesdrop in on it. So we're up on all the major podcast platforms. And of course, we turn on the camera and put it up on the YouTube show, the YouTube channel of the same name. So I'm really excited about this week's episode because my partner is somebody who is a member of the Prodigy Council, which is the highest level of coaching program that Jaime and I run. She is a charter member of that and does an amazing job in the business and has built quite a reputation speaking at some of the events. And so people in many companies have had the benefit of her expertise. She's coming to us live and in color from España today, Thais Majanis. It's so great to have you on the show. <laughs> so you're located just outside Barcelona, which was home of my favorite football team for many, many years. Although my favorite players have since left, and so I don't have the same <laughs> enamorment with them. But uh, I love Barcelona, one of my favorite cities in the world to visit. Oh, really? Um, so it's great that you're headquartered around there. Are you, is most of your business in Europe, in Spain? Like, give us a little breakdown of. of where you're building, please. My business is in, in Spain, but I have in Europe. But the most of my partners are in, in Spain, but I have in, in England, in France, in Italy, in, in some place from, from Europe. And now we start the business in America and we, we start with Mexico next October. So I hope I, I will have a lot of partners in, in, in America now it's the most are in, in Spain. 80 percent yeah. something like this. Opening America is a big, big deal yes. for any company um and any leader because it's just a uh, <laughs> such a crazy big market. It's where network marketing began and so it's uh it's uh, it's quite a, an accomplishment to to work here. A lot of challenges, very unique in many ways, um, but a really special market. And I think the U.S. market is becoming more and more like the other world markets because the U.S. is becoming uh, so diversified now. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the really successful companies in the U.S. now have big spanish-speaking teams that's become such a huge dynamic um in, in and really just everything you know there are huge pockets of russians there's huge pockets of um filipinos there's you know what i mean no matter any area of the world you can any country on earth you can find a huge uh population of them in the united states because it's just such a big country how are you, do you see any specific differences in how you're building in Europe versus 
U.S. or anywhere else, LATAM? This is a good question. We, we will see. Um, maybe the culture, the culture is very different, but I don't know specifically. Specific. I we will see. We are training for this, and we are working hard for for open a new a new country and a new um, to cross the Atlantic Sea, and a lot of challenge, a lot. Mm. All right, we're trying with a microphone now. Let's see if that is a it's a little better to hear Tai's voice. You know, I think another thing that I'm intrigued about you is that you're a psychologist. And I feel like I'm an amateur psychologist <laughs> because I think it's so you just have to become a psychiatrist or a psychologist to to understand the people and 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 our business is all about people yeah. how you know how, how does that help you out how how does that hurt you or help you um the fact that you do come from a psychology background i think it's a, it's good for i my, my voice is okay yes i think so okay yes um for a a kind of of situation that you have to 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 stay with the people like the empathy like the um, to know where is the is the, the the situation good for um make more pressure to the people or, or not no um to give um, your emotions to to control your emotions because i think it's important to know you before to work with the other people, no? So it's, it's important to 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 know to to sorry to know who who, who help to the people to do the, the some things and to give the skills and and yes I can speak a lot a lot but but now it's difficult for me in English. Um... <laughs> yes, and for anyone listening, as you know, English is not her native language, so <laughs> she doesn't do interviews in English. This is she's doing at my request, uh, and I'm so appreciative because I know being when I have to speak in Spanish in these um, kind of situations, it can be very daunting. <laughs> yes, um, I, I I want to speak uh, explain a lot of things, but it's it's difficult for me. And yes, I think it's it's it, it's it's a good skill for me to to be psychologist before doing a leader in the in the MLM. So what? Do, so for people who are new here. It's not an interview, right? I bring some things I want to talk about. My partner brings some things they want to talk about, and then we go. So what's on your mind? What What did you bring that you want to talk about today? Uh, oof, I have a lot of questions, but um, some of the questions can be, um, what what type of leader? You are. What kind of leader I am? Yes. What, since you're a psychologist, let me ask you first before I answer, what type of leader do you think I am? Oof, I think you are, but this is a, this is a <laughs> trampa. How do you say in, in English? Answer a question with a question is not an is not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will answer it. I promise. I'm just curious. You're in you, my. Vale, vale, vale. I you. think you are a uh, um, with a lot of a leader with a a lot of focus. No, you know how to um, give the way to the people to do to to go when where they want to go. And uh, I think you are um, 
how do you say it in English? Um, <laughs> not, you are, I think you are a balance between soft and hard. Because I think you are not a, a, a soft leader like, no, you, you you know what you want and you go for 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 them or you you play for them or you work for them, no, and try to do the same with with your teams, no. Uh... Well, interesting thoughts. I, I'm I was just kind of curious what uh, kind of led you to that. If I have to describe myself in terms of leadership. I believe that's a strong skill set of mine. I have gravitated to it for I don't know why, because I'm a very shy, introverted person when I'm not on a stage. But when I was in the Chamber of Commerce, I was elected president. When I was in the Florida Speakers Association, I was elected president. I was elected president of my church board. Um, and these aren't positions you normally campaign for. You get nominated and drafted for. <laughs> um, I have obviously led huge teams around the world in our business. Um, and some of that is impatient. I think you said I'm kind of a hard leader or a driven leader, I think that's a honest evaluation. I really want to do things the right way. I want to do them in the best possible way, the most efficient way. Part of that is my the type of personality I am. I am very driven for accomplishment um, to get things done. Um, and I'm impatient with not getting things done. That would be a, that can be a challenge at some times. Um, I was just meeting with a client, uh, last week where I was out at their corporate headquarters and I just started working with that company a few months ago. And one of the things I told them was, I understand for the first two or three months, I'm going to be the most hated person in this company because <laughs> I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to push. I'm very relentless. Uh, when people make a commitment to get a project done, I expect that they're going to do what they promise because I'm going to do what I promise. And I can be very strident sometimes, and that can put off people. But usually by the second month or the third month, they, they realize, no, Randy isn't really attacking me. He doesn't want my job. He doesn't want me to look bad. He's not trying to embarrass me. He's actually trying to work with me. I think he wants good things for me. Um He's relentlessly critical about the work, but he never personalizes it. Uh -huh. So if they send me uh, a script they have for a video, let's say, or it's a recruiting video, I'm going to just be relentless in my criticism of that if I think it's not going to work for the field leaders. Um, but I'm not attacking the person who drafted it. I don't want to do that. I just want it to be about the work. And it takes a couple of months, I think, before they figure that out. Because um, I'm particularly working with different cultures um, in Latam, as you know, in Asia, as you know, there's a lot of pretense where people will not criticize things and they don't want to offend any sensibilities and so they will just not discuss real issues that need to be discussed. 
So I bring that culture to my team when I'm working with the team. Uh, I want people to know I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I want you to be brutally honest with me. Um, I, I run my business like a chess match. I make a move. I expect them to make a move. I'm not going to make two moves in a row. They have to show me that they're serious about building their dreams. Um, it's, and that can be, a, um, that can cause problems for some people. They expect that, um, like, for instance, when I recruit a new person, you know me, you know my systems. I'm always going to have a new distributor orientation. And when I enroll someone, I'm going to get them. I'm going to instruct them. You got to go through this orientation and then call me as soon as you're done. And if they don't, I'm not going to chase after them. I'm not going to call you four times to beg you to do the new distributor orientation. If I do it a couple of times and you're not, I'm just going to move on. So that can seem hard to people. Um, but I've just recognized, you know, I've been doing this more than 40 years. And I think you people let you know who they are early on in the in the process. And you kind of find out who are the people who are serious about building their dreams and who are the people who just want to talk about it. So I'm oh I, I think we talk a lot about truth bombs in this series, right? You know, one of the truth bombs, I think, is that you can't drag people across the finish line. It just, it, it wears you down. And the, the, the truth bomb part of it, I think, is most people spend 80% of their time chasing after the people who are not very active and they only spend 20 percent of their time with their actual leaders who are building and doing it and need support but we have a culture where people focus on the problems focus on trying to work bring up the lowest common denominators and that's a big mistake i think I think you should spend 80% of your time with your leaders because they're the ones who are doing it and they're the ones who have that dream and they're willing to work for it. And um, the, I always maintain you have two types of coaching. You have the one-on-one -on -one coaching and you have group coaching. And so I'm always going to default so that the leaders are going to get my one-on-one -on -one coaching and my uh, uh, people who the, the 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 tourists, the touristas, are going to get the group coaching, and I think that the top leaders do that. That's they all learn they have to do that. Uh, I'm very good at creating a vision for the team or the company. And I think great leaders have to do that. You have to show your team that they can become part of something that is greater than themselves. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can't just be about the bonus checks. It, even if they're making 40,000 euros a month, there has to be more than just the money or the, the, the organization, the team will atrophy and it will start to bleed away um, because people have to feel like there's meaning in what they do. And so I'm I'm big on meaning and purpose. I don't write a lot of corny mission statements or vision statements because um, I think those are very clinical. I, but I do create a vision for the team. Um, I just recognize many years ago that my strength is leading people. My weakness is management. I'm not a detail guy. 
I'm too impatient for details. So a big part of my success is that I attract all kind of people and then I recognize the specific gifts that they have. And so I recognize there are uh, pe people in my team who are amazing at certain functions, creating workbooks, designing the PowerPoint slides, scheduling the event structure, managing the logistics of the team. And those are strengths for those people that are weaknesses for me. So I've been very blessed to have some amazing people in that regard on my teams. And I allow them to be good. At, I allow them to be great at what they're great at. And um, I think that's a, a, a key tenet of leadership is recognizing that the, the different skill sets of yourself and then the skill sets of your people. And then let everybody play to their strengths. Not everybody's a brilliant visionary leader. Not everybody's a visionary speaker on stage. Um, but they still can be great leaders for the team. They can be great to contribute to the success of people on the team if you put them in the right slots. And so I would think one of my gifts of leadership is that I'm able to do that. And the greatest leadership gift I have, I believe, is that I recognize potential in people before they recognize it in themselves. I'm old, I'm experienced, <laughs> I've seen a lot. I learned, I made a lot of mistakes. I learned from my mistakes. And so if you would have sponsored me when I was 20, I would have been the last guy on earth that you wanted to sponsor. If you would have sponsored me when I was 30, um, I wouldn't be the last guy you sponsored, but I would be one of your most irritating members on your team. And you'd say, ah, oh, God damn, Gage is, he's so difficult to work with. Uh, he produces a lot of business, though, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put up with it. But, um, uh, God, he irritates the hell out of me. Uh, and then if you sponsored me when I was 40, um, you would have probably said, you know, I think this guy could be big. I think this guy has potential. He's a little prickly around the edges, but, but uh, you know, I think he has gifts, right? But if, if we went back to that guy who was 20, you'd say he will never make it in the business. He is uncoachable. He's unteachable. He's arrogant. Um, his arrogance comes from his insecurity. Um, he's too much work. He's not worth the effort. There has to be somebody better that I could spend my time with. But if you made that decision about me all those years ago, you would have made a really costly mistake. Because, you know, at this point, my team tried to put together some numbers, say, what is what is Randy really produced in terms of his own teams when he works with in corporate, when he consults with companies, you know, and they came up with $27 billion that they say, we could track $27 billion worth of sales to Randy, where he's intricately involved with those companies and those teams that are producing those kind of numbers. So that's a pretty big mistake, right? But if I would have met me when I was 20, I would have never sponsored me. I would have said, what a stupid jerk. I would never sponsor this guy. But because I know that about myself, 
I can know that about other people too. And I can recognize, yeah, you know, they seem really arrogant, but I think it's because they're insecure. Mm -hmm. And if I can help them grow their self-esteem, if I can get them on the personal development path, I know there's potential in there. And I think that's a big part of what we have to do in our business is we have to recognize that for people. And um, that's the, the greatest gift all leaders can do, I believe, is, is help people, is help them see the potential in themselves. I would imagine that's a lot like the process you go through with a, with a patient who when you're working in your professional capacity as a psychiatrist psychologist i mean how do how do you see all that huh? how, how can i see that that, that you're explaining me yeah i mean similarities between psychology yes. and what you do as a team as the, the, the simulated one of the most important for me is that you have you you have to to want to change by yourself, no? This is the, the most important because if I have a patient that her woman or her uh, wife or her husband give me to me like, please, she has problems, but she don't want to to do something, uh, is, you cannot work with with her, no? It's the same with a, a partner, no? You can you can see a lot of um, possibilities in 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 this in this woman and this man, but. If he she or he can cannot see by 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 herself, you can do, do you can do you can do you cannot do anything, no? So it's the same. And it yet it, there are more 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 things like you. It's a work, hard work, uh, that don't don't can do in in two days. It's day by day you have to, to, to do something for your, by yourself you want to think a lot of to, th to think a lot and, and want to change a lot of things the same in in, in a team no and but I think that's important for the psychologist not to try to 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 make a therapy with all the people in your team no because it's it's different you have to you, you can do a, a coach but right. not a psychology no uh, and this for us I think for the people that study psychology and and, and work in psycho psychology this maybe sometimes I have to to say okay this, this is not my my <laughs> My work this is my my uh -huh. past work, no. So it's it's a different um, kind of, of, of work that I have to do, but but it's it's a little it's a little bit similar because you 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 help to people go in in the way that they they want, no. Yeah, yeah, because the psychologist can't be duplicated. We have to, as a coach, we have to learn parts of psychology, but. We still have to do the business in a way that our team is going to be able to produce the same results. Mm -hmm. How do you, what's your initial approach to people? Do you approach them about the products, the business, the, you know, what makes you or how, how do you begin the process with somebody you think is a great candidate? Uh... Always make a good feeling with the people. Always. I I never talk about uh, my business of my product if I don't have a special feel with the people or, or I don't know them a lot. No. So I think the first thing it's not not to be um, aggressive or or more a lot of direct direct if the the other people can say. If, you are talking about product, what product, no? Mm -hmm. So I think mm, poco a poco. Mm, I think the most important thing is that they 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 can feel that I am happy 
would do that I am doing. Maybe it's, it's a, a user product or maybe it's working in my business. And I, I try to use always the product and maybe the people can ask me for, for them or if not, and they can ask me about how are you? What are you doing? No? And it's easy, mm -hmm. it's easy for me to uh, start to 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 talk. But it's like uh when it's an a little bit uh skills of sedu seduction, seduction. Seduction, yeah. Seduction. I, I always tell talk about this with my team, like to make a partner, to make a, 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 a people interested in, in that you are doing, uh, you are you have to to develop a, a skill. You have to seduce so, them. You have to seduce them. This so never mm, so mm, so so fast, never so directly, never so hard. No, always with. Mano derecha, we say, with, with softly, softly, and the, 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 the people have to want to know more about, about you. No, I, I, I think it's better than you explain less than more. No, it's better than the people want to know more than you explain a lot of, a lot of things. It's better than they say, please, 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 no, no, I want to know more about the product or I want to know more about your, your business or your way of life or, when uh, why why you can stay here in the next month you're in Mexico and the next month you are in the other country of the of the of the world no I, I prefer this that explain 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 no and, and explain of the, the 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 good things of my business it's it's better than they they want to know more so I I always try to do this no but más es menos more is Less is better. Less is more. Yeah. In English, less we say more. less is less more. Is... Yeah. You've got to keep that intrigue, that sense of mystery. People, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes new members make is they try to do too much. They meet somebody in the supermarket. I learn, I learn about this. Eh? When, I, when I start, I, I talk so much and I explain all and... And with the years and years and years doing, I I I am learning a lot. And now it's I think this is the yeah. best way. But I, I understand that the new partners start to talk and talk and talk, and you are so um, um you are so happy about the business when you start some sometimes when you are um, too much um, expressive and too much exp expansive. You have to to control, no? Yeah. Yeah, I, I was the same. I think all new people, we just, we, we, you know, we meet someone at the supermarket and we want to give them our entire presentation while we're standing in line at the cash register. And it's just, it repels people. It sends them away. Of course. Of course. I, I am, I have partners now that I may be, may be working for doing partners for two years or three years. They don't know it, but me, yes. And it's like one day a coffee, six months later, another coffee. And I I know it will be my partner, but... Oh, the, 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 interesting. With this, yes, with this kind of, of doing, not, not for now and for today. I want you, you are my partner today because um, you can change the the the, the, the idea and the, the people will go... go Far, far from you because it's like what this woman what what they say it's so crazy no 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 <laughs> poquito poquito <laughs> mm -hmm. how are you if you notice I have a lot of women in this series because I find that the business seems to be very misogynistic. And a lot of men on stages and a lot of men on the interviews and a lot of men in the recognition. But there's so much great work being done by the other side 
of the gender equation. Um, and so, I, you know, you're one of many great women leaders that we've had on this series. How, how do you see that in your business? And you're doing business in, you're, you know, you're in Catalan t- portion of Spain. We could say that Spain and Latin America culture are very machismo. Yes. Um, how is that dynamic playing out in your business? What do you see? Uh, I, I think my, my business is not the, the typical business in Spain because it's, it's, it's about cosmetics and the 90% we are women in my business. Mm-hmm. So we have so many, not so much men. So we are women, uh, uh, probably about the product. And this is the, the the this is one of the things that I love it a, a lot in in all of these years. I, I almost six years in in MLM, never doing before in MLM me, and I appreciate so much that in this business, in my business, uh, we can make the dreams true to, from the woman. You know that usually the men win more money. The men. Uh, decide a lot of the, the, more things about the, the home sometimes no because he has the money and money 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 is power and in my in my business a lot of women can do the things that they never think about that they, they can do it no so is this this part for my business for me is wow no okay could see the the a woman to start and it's not so sex she has insecurity she she was and in the the couple of days the years no she's growing 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 and winning more money making a big teams and for me this is like wow uh, i love it so much so specifically in my in my business we we are we 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 don't uh, have this um, this, this pain, no, the machismo. We, we don't have, but yes, in right. Spain. Yes, in Spain, of course. But for for, I am so lucky because we are almost women, and and we are women in the stage. We are women, women in the high position. We are women in all the places. So it's it's okay. Great. So what would you tell a woman who's not in a cosmetic company? who's in some other kind of company and it's very dominated by men at the top of the company and they feel like they're worried if they could make it what would you tell that 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 woman yes i tell i tell i think i can i can tell tell them uh, the, the the life it's make it for the men <laughs> <It's, laughs> so should to do something for change this no uh, we start at home of course and later we, we start in, in the in our jobs and in our business so it's the moment to do it and i think when the women uh, are focused and are um, working hard they can they can contribute they they can do a lot of big big things no uh, the, the 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 thing is that they have the, the woman have to trust in herself, no? And mm-hmm. I try to I I will try to make trust in 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 herself. Like you, we can do it when we we do something together. We we are so big. We, we can do a great things. Uh, don't look to the men because if we look that they are doing, we never do anything no so we have to we have to work hard for a wall okay i love that uh i hope the women who need to hear this hear this ladies make sure you share this with your team members <laughs> who need to hear it cuz you're you're just you're talking about building belief and that's what great leaders do they build the belief of the people in their teams um 
now you're on like the faculty of the Cumbre Palooza event that Jaime and I do. You have spoken to other companies like that. You you see what's going on in this space. What would you tell the men? What are they doing that messes up the business? What do they need to fix to attract and empower more women in their own teams? And he, you know, beat up the men a little bit. Tell us what we're doing wrong. <laughs> I don't understand you. I'm trying to repeat. What do you think the... How do you think, what would what would be the advice you would give men that mm -hmm. you see in the business that maybe mistakes you think they make or things mm -hmm. that, yeah, mistakes, Asiya, that, you know, that they make um, or things they could do different that would empower and attract more women to their team? The men to attract yeah. the women. Wow. Yeah. My advice to the men for a track yes. woman. Mm, that's a good, good, good question. That uh, the, if I think that I like it to when the men tell me, um, probably a vision of do the things better. To 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 the importance of the uh, feminine view, no, in the in, yeah. in the business. Uh, the importance to have more, uh, uh, even, 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 some much more women in the in the business for attract more women and for make a woman business also. Yeah. And the idea that together, women and men, we can do um, bigger things, no? And and the the the. The things that the woman can can apport and the and the men are different sometimes that together uh, we can growing faster and and the I would need if 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 a man talk to me I I want to know I can show you I can I can um I tell you that for sure. I'm trying to do the best for the woman uh, stay good in this business and can afford the same that the men and try to make a, a big business with a lot of women. I think this is attractive for me. In the uh -huh. Okay. So what else do you have that you want to talk to me about? <laughs> with a lot of things. I have a lot of things. And... Um, how do if you how do you like that the people want to remember you Randy was in the future in a long future ay dios mio what do what do apport to the to the industry no what do special apport to the industry um there are a lot of of leader big leaders like you no but especially you what what do you give to the to the industry different than the other well that question of how do you want to be remembered that is you know that's why i say ay dios mio that's <laughs> the that's the big question uh for me i hope i'm remembered for empowerment, I that that uh, like at the end of my my book, direct selling success, I wrote a letter to my younger self, oh. where I said, "Hey, if I, if I could go back to meet Randy when he was only twenty years old mm -hmm. and he just started in the business, here's the things I would want him to know." Do you do this? Yeah, I did that in the direct selling success book, last wow. chapter. And um, so I wrote the letter and then I said, now, obviously, I can't go back and tell Randy, but I can tell you, the reader. <laughs> so I just did. 
And that touched a lot of people. Eric Gamio, who you know, um, told me, Randy, I was going in tears when I read that last chapter. Um, I wasn't expecting that from you. Um, I hope that's how I'm remembered, that I spent decades helping people believe in what they do and believing most importantly in themselves, right? When we join, we have to believe certain things. One, we have to believe that network marketing is a viable business model. I think that gets easier every single year because it gets proven out more every single year, right? When I was starting the business in the, you know, the late seventies, whenever it was, um, network marketing was on trial. Like this was a debatable thing. Is this a legitimate business or is this a pyramid scheme? You know, the, the United States government was suing Amway and trying to close down the whole profession. And Amway won that case, and they proved the government wrong. They proved that this truly was a legitimate business model. And so many companies have gone on to become multi-billion dollar companies. That's no longer in dispute. Um, big money, traditional investors like Warren Buffett owns three or four or five direct selling companies. And I saw an interview where he said that was one of the best investments he ever made. Uh, if you watch the financial news channels, they are highlighting our companies. If you read the business uh, newsletters and magazines, they're talking about our companies. So that's no longer a debate. We know network marketing works. The next thing people have to do is they have to believe in their company. Like, do these products work? Are they of value? Does the compensation plan produce the right behavior? Is the support structure there? Mas, 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 mas importante. Is it working for people? Right? Are the people who are in the company successful? And if there are people winning the bonus cars, earning the free trips, walking across stage, getting those pins for new ranks, um, they really are cashing big bonus checks every month. They're solid. They built an income. Um, then we know, okay, that company works. If you have successful people at the top of your company, you can believe in that company because those people at the top are working the same compensation plan you are. They're representing the same product line. They're using the same marketing materials and they're having success. So, if you say, okay, those people are all making success with the company, but I'm not, then it leads to, okay, we know the company works. Now I got to know, do I work? And that's the belief. And if I have a superpower, that's my superpower is that I can recognize that potential in people before they do themselves. And I let them know about that. And then I nurture that. And I really work relentlessly to empower those people. And the that's the most important work all of us do. A lot of people don't know my real job, huh? real job, and I'm doing air quotes for you guys who are listening on the podcast, is I'm a prosperity teacher. I put out a Power Prosperity podcast every week. I have a blog on randycage.com with a newsletter that goes out every Monday and every Friday. 
uh, helping people uh, practice the principles of prosperity. And that's what has bled over into my work in the profession is I'm all about empowering people. I believe it is your birthright to be successful. I believe it is your birthright to be healthy, happy, and prosperous. And so I bring that to my work in network marketing. I'm all about helping people believe in themselves and then paying it forward. You know, I was blessed. There were people who believed in me when I was a 15-year-old kid in jail for armed robbery and burglary, teenage alcoholic, teenage drug addict, made so many horrible choices very early in life. But there were still people who never gave up on me, and they believed in me. And so I feel like my mother, right? That poor woman... <laughs> What I put <laughs> her mothers, through. The mothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, that poor woman, the things I put her through <laughs> in my teenage years, there no mother should ever have to go through that. But she mm -hmm. did. So, like, I, I feel like I owed it to my mother to be a success. I owe it to the people who believed in me before I did to pay that forward. And so that's really the purpose of my work ever since. That's the purpose of Jaime and I to do duplicationnation.com. And this podcast is empowering those people. So I love your question. If you say, how do I want to be remembered? That would be how I want to be remembered as a leader who empowered people to become the highest possible version of themselves. I love it. <laughs> All right. So we have a new tradition in the show where I always ask my partner, what is the worst rejection they ever received or the biggest mess up? they ever did in a presentation um it's kind of become a favorite part of the show for many people because mm -hmm. they find it's inspiring to know that no matter how successful you are you probably had a horrible rejection at some point and you lived through it so that's the question i would pose to you what was the worst experience you ever went through with something like that and never forget this experience never i went to a, a shop and i i i talked to the boss is a woman uh -huh. and i want to explain and offer you a products a natural products and i think it's it's in your in your shop it maybe it maybe could be a, a good idea and she say okay okay come tomorrow and explain it okay I come the next day, I explain, and when I talk about make a team or MLM industry, well, uh -huh. she made like, no, this is a pyramidal, this is not legal, leave, leave from my shop, go, go, go. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, with all of the product and like, really? Yes, 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 yes. I don't want to talk about uh, with you anymore. Please leave. And it's like. So you had all the products laid out. All the products. And she, yes. she threw you out of the shop. Yes. <laughs> In the beginning, I, I talk about the product and she's good. But when I start to, to speak about the, the, the business, she go out. I take <laughs> all of my things like okay and I leave. And it was in Menorca in in Balearic Island here in Spain. It's a small island that I I go every 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 summer and I stay one month for vacations. And this 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 situation is at the beginning of my vacation. So I I have one more more for stay in the in the town, the small town, and I thought, 
wow, I cross probably this woman twice a, 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 a week <laughs> on the next day. So, oh no! So, wow, socorro! What what can I do? Because I don't want to 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 feel like I'm, I am a, a illegal person or I am offering dirty things to 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 people. No, and it's not Barcelona right. that probably I never see this woman. No, no, no. Probably I'll see in the party, not the party in the. Every week they make um, dancing in the in the the plaza of the town with the, all of the children. So I, I I see this woman for sure in a lot of times. So <laughs> oh man! I am about two or three days thinking, what can I do? What can I do? I want to go free from my town and, and no no feel bad for this, no? So after days and days and days thinking, I come back to the shop, like to, 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 my heart is to, 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 super nervous, no? But, but I, I have to, to to close this conversation. I don't want to, to to stay like this. And I come back, hello, and she, hello. Mm, and I talk to her about my feeling, no? Like uh -huh. I did the other day the shop so mm, triste, mm. How do you say triste? Um, how do you say in English? Triste. Uh, sad. Not triste, sad. Triste I, means sad. 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 I, I say the woman, sorry, but I want to tell you that I feel the other day. I, I live sad from this shop. I am an honest person. I, I, I don't offer you a, 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 a illegal uh, business. Probably you have a bad experience before than this and probably you think about this but this is not any kind of this but I don't want to talk to you about my business don't worry but I want to talk to you about my feeling I feel like this and I feel like this and I feel like this and I'm so sad and I don't want to cross you and cannot say bye bye please uh, please mm, don't think this about me no and the woman is like okay Okay. Yes, I have a I had a bad experience in a in a pyramidal business, uh, very bad, and I lost a lot of money. And okay, I don't I don't trust in your company, but okay, I trust in you. So make peace, and we can say hello and goodbye normally. And it's like, wow. And years later, she has a, a woman who's working with her. Uh, this woman leave the shop and it will it was my partner oh the, amazing the woman, his, yes so it's I, a happy end but in this moment in, in that moment it's i am like horror socorro yes. <laughs> amazing i'm so glad you told us and this this was four years ago or like this something like this in, in past month july i was in menorca and i in a shop, uh, shopping, buying, and she comes. Hello, hello. You're still in your company, yes? I I listen so much about your company now. Yes, it's a good company. Like this this summer, eh? one month ago, it's like I I do well, so it's it's so difficult for me to come back and say this to those women. But I think that I have to do it for for go um, with any problem for from the street, not to to to, to see this woman. So now. With, we meet the other day and the circle yes. is close. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad you told that story. And it's wonderful. It was a, it took a lot of bravery and courage to go back and have that second conversation. But I, I, it's good that you did. I think you, you needed to do that as it was a so difficult, person. But I feel that I have to do it because I don't want to cross this woman in like the... No? Yeah, and and it, yeah, then my heart is like before to go to the shop. It's like no, and and I go one day. No, 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 I can't. And I go back home, and another day back. Yes, today I come. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, good for you. Good for you. Well, Miss Thais, thank you so much for doing this. Um, Sorry I, for my English. Sorry. Yes, I know it's difficult to do this in another language. And I really, really, really appreciate the the effort that you took to do it. Um, for everybody watching, make sure to subscribe, share the podcast with your team. Um, we're here for you on a regular basis to share stories of people who have done it successfully and can help you build your business better.
So once again, Ms. Thais, muchísimas gracias. <laughs> thank you. Hey guys, I'm back and I just want to thank you for listening or watching and let you know if you made it this far, you are a serious, credible leader. You're somebody committed to success, professionalism, and honing your craft, sharpening your saw. So I want to recommend a resource to you. It's a monthly newsletter called MLM Confidential. Leadership lesson every month, duplication lesson every month, something we call the dish, which is kind of the industry news, what's going on in the space, who's moving where, what company is shutting down, what company is opening up, what is the, you know, the, the dish, the dirt of what's really going on behind the scenes that maybe the average person doesn't know. And there's a personal challenge every month. So check it out, mlmconfidential.com. I'll see you next week.